It's rare and dangerous for Johanna Watkins to be exposed to the outside world. It's gonna be okay. Allergic to almost everything imaginable, she's been living in isolation for the last two and a half years. Thinking of my child not being able to um, have human contact, to have a hug, to see the sunlight, to not be with her husband, not with her family. It's beyond my comprehension. But today, with her husband Scott by her side, Johanna is bravely making a journey into the unknown. She's moving to the new home that he's built to keep her alive. So extreme are her allergies, every second outdoors risks a life-threatening reaction. Oh, I think I throw up. It's okay to throw up. For a fleeting it's moment, okay. Scott is able to it's hold okay. his wife in his arms. I love you with all of my heart. Welcome to your new home, my dear. The loving husband, whose very presence has the potential to kill her. That day I moved her in was probably one of the scariest days for me personally and one of the scariest days for her. We knew there was a decent chance, no matter what precautions we took, and we took many, that she would go into the space and would go immediately into anaphylaxis and would never be able to live there. That was a scary feeling. As her closest genetic relatives, Johanna's three siblings are the only people on Earth whose natural scent she can tolerate. Not even her parents, John and Gail, can enter her protective enclosure. When people are jailed, and what's their punishment often? Solitary confinement. That's Johanna's life. Johanna suffers from an extreme form of a disease called mast cell activation syndrome. Smells, dust, chemicals, food, light, even changes in air pressure can cause her body to attack itself. What hurts me most as a parent, though, is thinking of Johanna suffering. She can't have any human contact. When her siblings are in there, they have to wear a mask the whole time. They can't reach out and touch her arm like this. And if they do, she'll get sick. It's a really awful contradiction that she's living in. She's surrounded by beautiful family, a lot of love and support. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, she must be terribly alone. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I tear up just thinking about it because just yesterday I walked by. And it just, you know, my heart grieved that he, she was right there. And I couldn't see her, couldn't tell her in person that, hey, Johanna, I love you. Johanna's inherently self-reactive. Her own body hurts her. You know, the, the mechanisms that are supposed to protect your body and Johanna's body hurt her. What is she allergic to? She is allergic to most foods. She is allergic to seemingly most individuals. She is allergic to almost every scent you could think of, even scents of things that are everywhere. Simply telling Johanna's story has required a lot of preparation. For three days, a strict cleaning process. Clothes carefully laundered, scented products and spicy foods strictly off limits. Bodies, hair and hands washed with a special detergent a blitz on the ordinary smells of everyday life. Hey. Hey, Pete, welcome. How are you, Scott? How are you? Good, mate, how are you? And now, entering the protective zone that Scott Watkins has set up to keep his wife safe. Okay. I'm glad you're here, Pete. Before we go any further, I know it's a little weird, I'm gonna have, actually have to smell you. It's time for Scott to, to make sure we've done our jobs properly. I don't smell anything strong. 
so nothing. I don't think there's anything I'm worried about. You're I'm good. good. I'm good. You're good. Okay, this yeah. is as close as we can safely right, get so to Johanna's filtered and pressurized chamber downstairs. So Johanna is directly below us. Right below. She's in the main floor. The She's only way of communicating directly oh. is by phone or video call. Hello, is it working? Yeah. How are you? Being diagnosed with this disease has meant a lot of loss of being able to be outside, to be in the real world. But the most painful part of the loss is people. I love being around people, especially my family and my husband. It's mind blowing because if you had told me six years ago that this was even possible for my body to behave in this way and for this to happen, I would have never believed you. Just a few years ago, Johanna and Scott had the hopes and dreams of any newly married couple. So we, we went on a bunch of hikes in, yeah. uh, in Portland, which was amazing. This yeah. is the trail of... Was it Johanna had spent time in Australia and New Zealand. All Blacks top. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and both had plans to see much more of the world before settling down to start a family. Then, suddenly, Johanna's health started unravelling. How fast and how dramatic was her slide from a few allergies to a, a fully blown disease? There is a phase where you're not sure you really believe that this is happening. There is a, a phase of this disease where you can't believe what you're seeing. There would be times where she would eat a food one day, and then the next day she would eat the same food and have an anaphylactic attack. And you honestly, we both thought we we're going crazy. Johanna was forced to give up her job as a teacher. She became allergic to her friends and her parents. Then, the toughest blow of all. I don't mean to sound disrespectful here, but at what point did you become part of the problem? <laughs> I had gone to my normal barber shop to get my hair cut, and when I returned back to our house, her throat became tight, and she, she nearly passed out. She was you know, having an anaphylactic type reaction, and so I left the room, obviously. And so then every day for the next couple weeks, I tried to come back in, but every day it didn't work. And we kind of came to a slow realization that I, that she was, like, allergic to me. Must be awfully difficult, though. You, you oh. can't even hold your wife. No, it's terrible. Just the, the kind of unique loneliness that comes with having have been with somebody you love and then not being able to be with that person, even though they're still there. It's awful. Mast cells are our first line of defence. Found in every tissue, they react to threats like illness or infection and tell our immune system how to respond. But Johanna's mast cells are hypersensitive and send out the wrong messages to the wrong places. They could be in odours that she's uh, smelling, various physical forces like heat or cold, uh, sometimes to pressure or uh, even ultraviolet light, for example. So Johanna's mast cells are totally confused. They, that, that's a good way to put it. Johanna had been misdiagnosed by 30 doctors until she met Dr. Lawrence Afrin, a world authority on mast cell activation syndrome. But none of his treatments, even an experimental course of chemotherapy, has turned things around. In the past year, Johanna has had to be rushed to emergency eight times. Given her sensitivity to the outside world, every trip to the hospital in itself is a threat to her life. She needs a new drug. and. There are some interesting options uh, coming down the, uh, the research pipeline, but they're not here yet. So she's got to ride out the storm. And at this stage, there's no way of knowing when the storm's going to pass. 
I'd like to think uh, the odds are in her favor, but there are certainly going to be difficult times uh, ahead. All right, so as we go down here, to our left is the pink room, I call it, where Johanna's air system begins. Right. Johanna's very survival depends on her air being as pure as possible. The room is covered in pink foam, which is virtually scentless. In the basement, and Scott has built an array of filters to keep the smells of the outside from getting in. Air is taken from the room and is passed through many filters and is literally pumped into her space very quickly. So she's breathing this air right now. She is now. breathing this air. In about 10 seconds, she'll be breathing this air after it's been filtered. So technically, this air is keeping her alive. This yes. room is keeping her yeah. alive. This room is keeping her alive. Every time she eats, Johanna is taking a gamble. Her ever-dwindling diet is now limited to just 11 individual foods, mostly vegetables and spices. For more than two years, she's been forced to eat the same two basic meals. Thank you so much. We've been having a lot of trouble finding parsnips that work for her, so this is going to be a huge blessing. Yeah, Featherstone's the best. There we go. For Scott, the pressure is enormous. The wrong type of carrot or a cucumber from a different farm can cause an anaphylactic attack. As a result, he spends 30 hours a week in the kitchen carefully vetting and preparing Johanna's food. And I'll look over and see him through the airlock in the kitchen and tears would right away come to my eyes because oh, that grief will be fresh and I'll miss him and he can't even express it. And so I miss him a lot. Even though this is hard, I still have him. What a gift that is. Unable to be together, Scott and Johanna are constantly on the phone texting and talking to each other. On date nights, they'll watch the same TV shows at the same time and chat as if they're in the same room. It can be the loneliest of relationships, but right now, it's the best they can do. When you can't have a physical relationship, mm -hmm. how deep does an emotional relationship become? Right now, our relationship can be just as as full and meaningful as anyone else's. It just looks really different. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Since the move to the new house, Johanna's health has stabilized, but not improved. But Scott Watkins remains as devoted to his wife as any husband can be, eternally hopeful of the day they can be together once again. Oh, I miss it so much. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. But I have hope that I'm praying that someday we'll get to be together again, physically. On your wedding day, mm -hmm. you made a vow mm -hmm. through sickness and in health. Yep. Really testing that one. Yep. We just kind of developed a new normal, a new system that works. And it doesn't have any resemblance to a normal relationship, but we've done the best we can, I think, in, with the with the reality that we face. I think about her allergies and inability to be with me in a daily sense. Today, she's allergic to me. We'll see about tomorrow. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.